Sales Wolves Podcast. This is episode 19. 19, baby. 19. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Uh, <coughs> that one kind of got me a little weird. <clears throat> that one kind of got me angry. Mm, goodness. Well, good. Because today we're talking about seeking discomfort. No pain, no gain. A lot of people think that's a stupid saying, but yeah. they're stupid people. Mm. So, anyway, the reason we do this podcast is uh, a couple of reasons. We want to appreciate what we think is the most noble profession on this earth, which is sales. Mm. And when we say that, you may go, well, I'm not in sales. Well, we're here to tell you everybody's in sales. And we want you uh, to understand that whether you're dealing with little children or you're dealing with big children, <laughs> called adults, uh, or your whatever your profession is or whatever your profession isn't you have to interact with people on a daily basis and sales is part of everything mm -hmm. which is just it's it's just interpersonal skills it's selling people yourself. skills you're selling yourself you're selling an idea you're selling a concept you're selling that guy to marry you or that girl to marry you whatever it is I don't know mm -hmm. but everybody sells people we appreciate them and we're doing that for them and then for people that are their career is selling a product or service um, or selling themselves as a product or service then which I guess if you're selling yourself as a service that's probably called prostitution <laughs> <That's> <laughs> probably the oldest occupation. <laughs> but but anyway that's uh, we want to give you some tangible advice and 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 today um, we've got a good one it's on seeking seeking discomfort and so I'm gonna let Tyler take off on the first one and we're both gonna we got an article here that we pulled a lot of this from by Sherry Campbell on entrepreneur.com mm -hmm. and it's seven inevitable stages of pain before you succeed it's a great article and and we thought we'd just use the article to, to read a little bit of that and then rip off of it so you take yeah off and I think before we go into that I, I think maybe you want to say a couple of words because I know coming for you and it's transferred into me now, um, you probably over the last, maybe a number of years, but really over the last year have set out strategically to seek discomfort right? yeah. in every aspect of your life every aspect. in order to grow. True. So in order it, to get the gain part from the pain, pain part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, you know, the thing that people don't talk about a lot is when a seed goes in the ground, it's got to die mm. to, 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 mm. to live. It's got to die and break open for the new life to come forth, right? And so I thought a lot about that, and I went, okay, I've got to, I've got to die. I've got to force pain upon myself. And, you know, you hear about those monks, and you hear about, you hear about um, uh, the people a long time ago that would beat themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and I've always thought, who, who would do that? And until this last year, and and so what I what I realized as my life got more comfortable, is that is that I became a comfort seeker, hmm. okay. And 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 what I realized is as I as I sought comfort, life delivered pain. Hmm. And I went, if that's true, then the opposite must be true. So if I seek pain, I seek discomfort then life will continue to deliver pleasure. And and so I started first physically, mm -hmm. um, you know, and this was several years ago, I was 225 pounds. Um, I had just very- a tiny man. Just a tiny man compared to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You would have eaten me for that's breakfast my, even then. <laughs> if that's your goal. <laughs> <laughs> I was too, so we're talking about physics. I was 225 pounds. The doctor said you have diabetes, high blood pressure, your cholesterol's fucked up. You're, you know, mm -hmm. he used those words too. He was a real nice guy. I hated him. <laughs> um, and and I literally had an argument with him. Mm 
mm-hmm. an argument with him. He told me I was diabetic. I was like, what? Dude, you didn't tell me, you know, I just thought I argued. He, mm-hmm. he was like, look, let me show you the scale. You're supposed to be 165 pounds. I was like, I hadn't been that since the 11th grade. Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, you haven't been healthy since the 11th grade. <laughs> and I was like, fat boy, what about you? Mm-hmm. And and I said, does that take that into consideration? <laughs> I was in his office flexing, right? <laughs> But let me tell you, I got mad and I left there and I went, okay, I gotta learn about health. I've gotta learn some things. It wasn't comfortable reading all the articles. It wasn't comfortable mm-hmm. stopping all my pleasure seeking when it came to food, yeah. right? It, that's not comfortable. None of that's comfortable. And so over a six month period, I dropped down to about 185. And so mm-hmm. now I'm, 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 I stayed around 185 to 195. Mm-hmm. And now I'm, I'm, back in that seeking discomfort mode and I'm down in the 170s like I'll hit 180 178 yeah. right yeah. there and and I'm pushing even further to get healthy 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 but it's it's discomfort you seek the discomfort it's nothing's comfortable about getting up at four and working out mm-hmm. no no nothing's comfortable but I want to live and so it's the law of displacement right I've got to give up something yeah. to get something it's the law of displacement but this this seeking discomfort is where everyone needs to start. You know, I, I do weird ass things like get in, I dump tubs full of ice <laughs> and I will go and sit in ice and until I just absolutely cannot stand it or until I just become comfortable. And the cold is a great teacher when it comes to the pain. Mm-hmm. And I seek that. Everything else in a day seems easy after that, right? It's true. So, so it's been a, it's been a, um, it has been an ongoing seeking of discomfort, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. We put up these barriers, we compartmentalize as men, we do that a lot. Mm-hmm. Women do it too though. Yeah. And and we section off parts of our life and we we we, we, we guard against, you know, relationships that we're gonna have the pain. We don't open up, we don't so seeking the discomfort there is the only way that you're gonna have fulfilling relationships. Hmm. It's the it only seems like way. there's something there as far as you proactively seeking the discomfort and bringing the discomfort to you so that when other discomfort is brought to you from external sources that it's it doesn't it's not that it doesn't phase you but it doesn't even register right it's because not, it's I'm already because I'm because I'm already seeking more discomfort than anything that could be brought my way yeah so really it makes it to where when you have those obstacles that come on it's just like not no big deal. You know, it takes what somebody thinks is an obstacle and just reduces it to a speed bump. Mm-hmm. You can hit those like yeah. fast. Mm-hmm. You ever hit one fast in a car? I have. And you know what happens? It's not as bad as hitting it going slow. Mm-hmm. I ain't talking about this one time in high school. <laughs> this buddy of mine had this huge jacked up Bronco. And I was standing, this is my parents, when they see this podcast, they're going to cry. I was standing on the back of it. It was like one of those old, like '70s Broncos with top off and oh, yeah. like 40 inch tires. Everybody, somebody had floored one. it. And this wasn't a speed bump. This is one of those ones in Thornblade that were like the big. Oh like, yeah, slow yeah, down yeah, ones. yeah, yeah. And we hit it going like 80 and like airborne for like three seconds, which felt like 35 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you felt like you just jumped out of a plane. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jason, can you text Amanda and see if she can go out there and tell them not to come down here? Because I can hear them starting to mow. If they come down here, it's going to be really annoying. I feel like you read my mind. I've Did you already do that? Okay. Yeah. 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 It's giving, it's giving me anxiety. You don't. Because you know what would happen today. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't just shout something today, dude. I, somebody would get hurt today. I, would, I was like, could you please go ask them not to blow or mow by the building? Because, yeah, because we're this. doing seeking discomfort and seeking pain, and we would seek to inflict pain. <laughs> We need to yeah. change their schedule. <laughs> <laughs> hey, every Friday morning around 7.30 when we're doing our podcast, can you guys come mow? Yeah, can you come mow and we eat right outside the <laughs> fucking window? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so getting to this article, right. the seven inevitable stages of pain before you succeed, there really was five of them that I absolutely loved. The other two were good, but the five and, and for the sake of time uh, that we wanted to go through. So I'll hit the first one here. You will feel pain. <laughs> Every successful person travels a painful journey. Suffering is an integral and essential part of any real pursuit of success. Nothing about success comes easy, but every painful story has the potential to have a successful ending. That's huge. You may as well accept suffering as a traveling companion rather than resist it and create more struggle. 
See each day as a day that you are blessed with new chances and opportunities to start from the place you find yourself. Uncertainty and stress are inevitable. Both prompt you to make adjustments to mitigate their effects, mentoring you toward further success. Oh my God, Tyler. Look at... That's like the... Uncertainty and stress are inevitable. Mm -hmm. Now watch. Here's what she calls them. They are your mentors. Yep. <laughs> Uncertainty, stress, you will feel pain. They are your teachers. Mm -hmm. So why would I seek pleasure, okay, seek the comfort, and have life deliver me these things mm -hmm. that are not of my choosing, the pain that's not of my choosing, the, the stress that's not of my choosing, mm -hmm. the... the um, uncertainty that's not of my choosing, right? So if I sit in my house and I play video games and I and I don't go work, life's going to deliver me um, in an eviction mm -hmm. notice eventually, sure. right? And that's painful. That's uncertain. I don't know where my next place mm -hmm. I'm where I'm going to lay my head. I'm not sure where the next meal is going to come from. Life's delivering an uncertainty because I sought pleasure, yeah. right? You could seek the pain of the opportunity and walking through it, and the uncertainty of whether it works out or not is of your own choosing, but it's a great teacher. You learn through it. Does that yeah, make sense? It, it absolutely, it absolutely does. And, and one way I was thinking you could phrase this is, if you seek comfort, you will be blessed with pain. Oh, yeah. And if you seek pain, you will be blessed with comfort. With comfort. And and I say blessed because it's just the world's way of teaching you that what you're doing is not right. That's right. right. So if you're seeking comfort, the world is gonna bless you with the ability to realize that you're off the you're not on the right track. That's right. Uh, but if you go ahead and seek the opposite, then you will be blessed with comfort and with success and with yeah. growth. I mean ultimately growth. I mean we're not saying if you go seek pain, boom, you're successful. Right. But you will grow. That's right. Regardless. And in every area. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I, I mean, you can take a relationship. You can take our friendship. Mm -hmm. Our friendship has grown after our more uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. Right? They're not comfortable. Yeah. You know, you're not paying me enough. I want to make more money. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, like, you'll you'll never if, hold me anymore. You never hold me anymore. <laughs> Don't make me take uh, a bath. You never asked me how my day was. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, we're sick. The, the, funny, the, the interesting thing here, though, is when it talks about it being a mentor, it's, it says it prompts you to make adjustments to mitigate their effects. So you have uncertainty and stress, which are inevitable. But by mitigating their effects, so by actively pursuing things that will not allow the, the uh, uncertainty and stress to affect you. So by mitigating that, that is what mentors you towards further success. And so it's understanding that the stress is there, the uncertainty is there, but what that causes in your life when you can mitigate that yeah. is when it, that becomes the mentor. It's like that's, that's what's pushing you and driving you to always make sure that everything that you're doing. so. As an example, working hard, and that's what we always talk about, is so by working hard, you can mitigate the effects of stress and uncertainty. Right. Because if you're working hard, then you can have peace that uncertainty, everything will be uncertain, but it'll all work out because you're putting in the work. It's by doing that that you're able to then be in a position to where discomfort is it's just everyday life okay. and that's and you you've really been I mean you've been talking about this for really the, the past year and a half probably a lot mm -hmm. um, and it's something that I've tr really tried to adopt in myself and just seeking not discomfort but also just uncomfortable situations mm -hmm. uh, and just embracing uncomfortable situations and I mean, every yeah, time you I'm, left every time box I'm around you. You, you left a message. You, <laughs> I make you uncomfortable. So, you, so you that's really the yesterday. only reason why you're my mentor is because yeah, because I'm real uncomfortable. Because you put me around. in discomfort. <laughs> the message you left yesterday made me uncomfortable. Like I was, I was really proud. Yeah. 
Like that was a great message. We're not going to talk about it because your your blood pressure just went up. Just because you deleted it. Oh, but I'll let a few. Because not everybody here. else is, you know, okay with discomfort. No, they're not. No, they're not. So let's move so, on to the next point. <laughs> let's let's get off that. Um, you will want to give up prematurely. You're going to want to quit. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to quit as you wander through your more directionless times on your journey. Because I promise you. Whatever journey you're on, you are going to feel directionless and lost. You will experience intense moments of feeling lost and hopeless. You will feel like you're in an abyss, you're by yourself, you're swimming for all your worth in the blackness, and there is no light. That, that's going to happen. It is during these times you must hold tight to your vision and take back control of your motivation. All right. So that, that sentence to me said two things. Number one, you better have a vision. <laughs> And it better be rooted in what you really want, right? And then number two, we all control our own motivation. Mm -hmm. God, this lady's great. I'm going to start mm -hmm. following her, yeah. whoever she is. She's awesome. You must prepare yourself mentally to fight that little voice inside your head that becomes a force to be reckoned with when you have to push yourself to keep going when you don't feel like it. The quickest way to derail your dreams is to quit when things look bleak. Quitting when you're on the front lines of these critical moments keeps you living amongst the average, the successful persevere and rise. And you remember what the podcast we did with Tom Shea? I was just about to say that, yeah. This this is where I this is where I go with that, right? Mm -hmm. So what the biggest thing I took from his podcast, which we've already highlighted in our, our thing last mm -hmm. week and we already released it, you know, what, a week or two weeks ago. So so um the the biggest thing that I took from that in the Navy SEAL training is that they take away their ability to win yeah. when they're training. So so somebody that's a competitor like you or me, mm -hmm. we hang our hats on winning, right? Mm -hmm. And when that blew my mind, I went, oh my gosh, that's how I'm going to start training myself. Take away the option to win, and then do I trudge it out? Do I keep going? He, he talked about missions that they're on. He, he, he said every mission they went on in, in this one tour, every mission they went on, they ran out of food, they ran out of water, they ran out of ammunition, and they ran out of their zero hope to live. No hope to win. And what did they do? Persevere. Persevered. Keep moving and, I, and, I, and honestly when we sat there and had that conversation with Tom which was such a, an incredible conversation I don't I don't think I mean I, I would like to say that by saying I don't know that really no one would know how you would handle that situation when every every um, ava available answer like when you when you're almost about to solve this problem this situation and then they completely flip it on you to where you, they, like, like you said, where you can never accomplish your goal, where you can yep. never win. They make it, I don't know how you would, I mean, I, I don't know how I would handle that. I don't know how I would handle I think, it. But I think it gets that, and the reason why they do that, I mean, because they're stripping you down to your very bare, mm -hmm. innate, yep. what's inside you. And, and from there, you know, it's funny, the parallels, because with what they're doing, they're trying to evaluate you on the fact that like one day we are going to go into combat together and I need to know that you are at the, your, at your very almost molecular level built to help me survive. Yep. And so, but the parallel to the rest of the world and, and everyday life, which is a joke compared to that yeah. is, is similar. It's like, yep. you know, figuring out what you're actually made of. Um, there was another thing um, in here where it talks about, um, it is during these times that you must hold tight to your vision and take back control of your motivation. Um, so that's discipline mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And, and that gets right back into it. And I don't want to go into it because we talk about it a lot, but that whole do it anyway mentality. Mm -hmm. So it talks about when you don't feel like it, do it anyway. Yep. But it's developing the disciplines that when you are in those times where there's been so many times in my life where you felt directionless. Like, yep. Like I've been in a hotel room by myself, you know, where I'm like, what am I doing right now? Yeah. And where you just feel like, you know, where, where, how does this stack up to where I'm trying to get here? And you feel like, what am I doing? What's, what's the, what's the point? And that was one of the things Tom Shea said was he said, people get to where they're like, what did he say? He said, people 
get to the point where they're they said like this is dumb or like this is dumb. is that what they said this yeah. is dumb or this isn't um, what's the point yeah like this doesn't make sense yeah uh, and it was when they kept f flipping the script on them every yeah. time they were almost about to accomplish it. and when they realized like well, okay it can't be accomplished they're like well then what's the point um, I didn't say this in that podcast but when he was talking about how especially in Hell Week where they take away any chance of accomplishing the goal. Mm -hmm. They take, continually take it away and change the script on mm -hmm. them. I was thinking, I was like, the gods did that to me for 15 <laughs> years. <laughs> I was like, the universe handed me that. Yeah. I didn't win. I never won. I never accomplished my goal. I'll get so close mm -hmm. and the whole thing would dissolve and go away. And I was like, how does this, mm -hmm. how has this happened? And so it was, it was, it was interesting. That was probably one of the more eye-opening things for me because it was like, okay, I understand. Well, and, and I'm sure there's a probably a famous quote uh, around this because I'm sure I didn't just think it up. But it's probably on the JosephCaldwell.com. <laughs> <laughs> probably, but something to the effect of like the something about the caliber or the the uh, character of a man is not defined by um, the successes that he achieves, but how he reacts to the failures and you know some, something yeah. along those lines is, is so important. But ultimately, it's it's discipline. Being able to develop the discipline to where you don't really know why you're doing it. It doesn't make sense right now, but this is what you do. Yeah. This is just what you do. Like, no, I'm, I'm tired. I don't really feel like waking up this morning to do A, B, C, and D. But you have the discipline to know that regardless of how you feel, you're going to do A, B, C, and D. Yep. And that because takes it's tied time. to your vision. Yeah. And you control your motivation. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think something important there is that, like, I can imagine people watching this um, that maybe in a in a career that necessarily they don't think is like their one hundred percent their passion. Like, this is what I was born to do. I was made to um, so you know, sell, yeah, sell pencil erasers, and you know that's just my passion for what I'm doing. But but it's having the vision of what that will get you and what what where that will take you and. And having more of a long-term vision of ultimately not the vehicle that you're in, but the well, that was an interesting quote. I was going with there. So the, it's not the vehicle that you're in, but it's the road that you're on and the destination exactly. you're trying to get to. Jason, did you just type that out? Because that was type that out because that was awesome. And uh, <laughs> make sure you get that to Ricky to put on the subject matter of change. The Joseph Caldwell at the Joseph Caldwell. So the, the, uh, uh, all right, that was good. Twenty-two Copy. minutes. Copyright. We're going to go for Copyright hour. 2017. Copyright. <laughs> all right. So anything else on that one? I mean, that was great. Because no, I mean, that was awesome. You will man. always want to give up. And and I think of that picture. It's so cliche. That picture of the dude in the mine. And oh, he's yeah. like, you know, a foot away from the vein, from wherever he's looking for. And that's when he turns around and, and, and leaves. And, and the majority of people have no earthly idea how close they are to the breakthrough or to the success when they quit. And, and you know what? Up. And you know what? The, the same is, is also true. You don't have any idea how far away it is because I promise if I knew that it was 15 years away hmm. when, I, when I started, yeah. my ass would have quit. Mm -hmm. I would have quit. If I knew it was 15 years away, I would have been like, man, I got I to gotta, I gotta be somebody different. I got to do yeah. something different. And so you just, you just decide quitting is not an option mm -hmm. and you just keep plowing. That's why I like uh, you know Andy Frisella when we when we listen to all of his stuff. I love that dude. That's why I like his stuff because he's like, this took fifteen years to get here. Yeah. And he talks about the as like anything 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 of great success um, is is going to take a long time. Yeah. And like and, and obviously we don't even want to get into all the ridiculous nonsense on social media uh, that would tell you differently. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to take a long time to get to where you're trying to go um, if you're trying to do great things. Yep. Um, and that's where, like, in, in Gary as well, Gary Vaynerchuk, he sometimes he gets a little dark when he's been in some conversations. This was a few months ago. He's, he had some conversations on, on Daily View with some people where he just, like, looked at him. He just, like, he's like, you know what I realized? He's like, I'm going to do this forever until the day I die. And... It's just because that's who I am. That's who I'm born to do. That's this is what I'm born to do, and it'll never stop. Yeah. And he and he was using that in the context of being in a conversation about all the the pain and all the stresses and all the 
you know, when you have a when you're running a an eight hundred person agency and you're responsible for eight hundred people's lives and their families and all the stress and, and responsibility that comes with that, he's like, I chose this, this is what I'm supposed to do, and it's always gonna be hard forever. Yep. And just coming to that realization and just being able to develop those daily disciplines to where you know that, hey, this isn't going to be like, here's my five-year plan, and in five years, I'm going to be here. Yeah. It's developing the daily disciplines so that you know that you're moving forward That's every right. single day, regardless of whether it's an inch forward or a mile forward, that you're moving forward. And you'll fight for every bit of both of those. That's awesome. So the next one, you will lose relationships. As you succeed, there will be a handful of people who will not be willing to support you. It Six might be two handfuls. Yeah. Success takes a tremendous amount of effort and sacrifice. The effort and time you need to put into your journey will not be tolerable to some who feel you owe them more of your time, effort, or energy. The successful sacrifice an enormous amount to get where they want to go. Trusting that the people meant to travel their journey with them will accept and support the sacrifices which need to be made. You will likely lose relationships with those who do not passionately share in your vision. As you succeed, your path will narrow. There are fewer people at the top. And it's lonelier. Mm -hmm. It's lonelier. And that's what I was talking about, the, the law of displacement. Mm -hmm. You're going to, I don't care, you can't list anything in your life right now that you attach value to that you didn't trade something for. Mm -hmm. You can't, can you? No. But anything of value you take, any relationship of value, any, any item of value, there was a sacrifice, there was a trade-off. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about relationships like that, that's inevitable sometimes. Yeah. So. You know, I think a lot of people they they would read that, and they would and they would equate that to regret, and they would equate that to well, you know what? Yeah, Tyler, Joseph, man, they're they're working so hard and they're going so fast and they're doing all this, but man, you know, ten years down the road they're gonna regret, you know, all the all the times that they could have been hanging out with friends and having a good time and relaxing and enjoying life and all this. I feel like that's kind of the excuse of the person that's not willing yeah. uh, to go all in at that level. Yeah. Um, is that, and, and Gary talks about it a, a lot uh, when he talks about you know his 20s and 30s working 18 to 20 hours a day, every day. Mm -hmm. Like weekends, nights, yep. no vacation, all of that. Uh, but ultimately got him to where he is now. Um, and it's just, a, it's, just a, it's just a mentality switch. Um, but it's tough. I mean, that, that is tough. Um, when when you're going through that, when you're going through that initial process of, of crossing over into that, being comfortable. There he is. Uh, being comfortable. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he's trying to be a little quieter with the with the blower. He's, like, like, he's, he's like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rev it up a little bit <laughs> outside the window. <laughs> scream at him to get a broom. <laughs> <laughs> Get a broom, some friends. He's never had a quiet. podcast disrupted by loud brooming. Loud. I guess it's called sweeping. <laughs> loud brooming. <laughs> that is some funny shit. But you, you will lose relationships. It will happen. Dude. And and man, it's been so funny just over the last five months um, as I've started to put myself out there on social media. Yeah. Um, some of the conversations that I've had and some of the conversations I've heard of that have. <laughs> that have about taken you. place about you yeah um, it's been it's been interesting um, when you're so focused on where you you're going and and what you want to do and knowing that it takes sacrifice yeah and for me you know I've got an eight month old I am willing to sacrifice everything now so that later on when that eight month old and, and you, you you said something to me about about this a long time ago you're like you're like an eight month old you know they need a mother and father but they really just need sleep and food change them Hug them. some more sleep food nurturing yeah but you know who really needs you is a 13 year old daughter you damn skippy and what you can create from now until then to be able to have the flexibility to be there um, and to create a lifestyle around them mm -hmm. um, 
you'll never be able to get this time period back. Right. And and I go and like some people would hear that and they would say, well, that's God, this guy has no no heart, you know. But it's not that; it's the opposite. It's the opposite. It's, it's having um, it's almost it's it's having more love by being willing to sacrifice now yep. for what you want to be able to provide later. And and you can see it when you because I have four, I have three daughters. Mm -hmm. 14, 12, 11 are my daughters. My son is nine. And my 14 year old still still wants to hold my hand. Mm -hmm. Go. So, um, so my 14 year old daughter still wants to hold my hand, right? Mm -hmm. And and so you can't, you, you, uh, where the fuck were we? Where'd I go from that? Thing. Because then I, you, so then you went from there to talking about the people that say that or the, the light that's shining on them and. I said, right. Under the rug or... All right. So my 14-year-old daughter still wants to hold my hand, and so if you look at the, if you want to see what your relationship with your daughter is going to be like with the, how you're doing things, all you have to do is look 10 years down the road, which is where I'm at, or 15 yeah. years down the road, yeah. where I'm at, and and see if what we're talking about is is true and actual. And and people have said it forever. They they, they when she was when she was two, or and all of them, they're like. Oh, they're good now, but wait till they're three. They're great now, and this is it. Wait till they're four, and this is blah 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 blah. So what happens is the success that you're going after, like the the when you started opening up on social media, mm -hmm. and and talking about that, I heard stuff about you, and mm -hmm. I just let it roll over me, and mm -hmm. and and you heard stuff, and but what happens when you're focused and you're building something, is that light that you create shines on other people's lack of work. It mm -hmm. it exposes their their um, faults and it makes them uncomfortable since they didn't seek the discomfort yeah. they hate you for it yeah well since right. they're seeking the comfort you're bringing them discomfort pain yeah <laughs> it is great <laughs> bring the pain bring I came the pain. to bring the pain anyway man let's jump onto this you will doubt yourself this is a this is a big one all right because because here's the thing you you are going to doubt yourself I, I no doubt no doubt. <laughs> No doubt you'll doubt yourself. So no diggity. No diggity. No you, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go you said that like I wasn't gonna catch it. I was a little too freaking old. You're a dick. God. So you're gonna doubt yourself. I'm gonna read read yep. this. Nine times out of ten when you start a new venture, you'll go in and out of feeling utterly paralyzed. <laughs> It's because you doubt yourself. Sometimes you may doubt your knowledge, decisions you have already made, and you may doubt your instincts. All of this doubt creates an internal conflict over what you need to do to move forward. You doubt because you don't want to make the wrong decisions and end up in an unrecoverable mistake. Keep in mind, there are no unrecoverable mistakes. In anything, there are no unrecoverable mistakes. There are only new directions. You must push through your self-doubt and not allow it to partner up with delay. You must push through self-doubt, not take the self-doubt and make it your buddy, and then that buddy partners up with delay, and your vision gets further out, right? Mm -hmm. Doubt and delay, when paired, derail success. On your journey, trust there is no such thing as wrong. That's wild, right? Mm -hmm. It's only learning. Yeah. There is no spoon. You know where that's from? <laughs> or did you? Are you? Have you not seen reruns of of The Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> Jerk. I think that came out when I was six. <laughs> <laughs> the only wrong choice is not making one. Which not making a choice is a choice, but it's it's about the only wrong choice you can make. You will likely always feel some level of self-doubt, but you can choose not to doubt your choice, to stretch yourself, and to grow. Doubts are an inevitable part of succeeding. The important thing is that you act in spite of your doubts, mm -hmm. right? And so, when you look at doubt, the cure for doubt is action. Mm -hmm. that, 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 if we boiled all that down, and you just put it into one one nice big barrel that somebody can take, it's action. Mm -hmm. you, you, you doubt whether you're going to be able to sell this new product at work, who cares, take action, right? Mm -hmm. Call a thousand people and, and present, 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 present. When you fail, learn from it, grow, present, you'll start selling. It's not, I mean, 
So it's, the most successful people in the world have failed the most times, period. Period. It's the only way. Same. And, that's, and they all doubted themselves. Mm -hmm. All doubted themselves. Yep. I promise you, Colonel Sanders, when he was barnstorming across Kentucky, trying to sell his recipe and start mm -hmm. Kentucky Fried Chicken, he failed. He got, ele it was something like 1,100 no's. In a row. Hmm. 1,100. It was over 1,000, I know. I'll, we'll look the story up and whatever, yeah. or Google it. And, and, and after you go to the subjugator of change, the Joseph Caldwell. <laughs> but, but, dude, this, uh, this 11, like, that's over a thousand no's. Who takes a thousand no's and keeps pushing? Someone that's when you're in your 60s, driven. he was in his 60s. Did you realize that? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Anyway, he doubted himself. You know, sure. all the, most of the stories and little anecdotes that we throw out here are from like war heroes. So when, like, when you said when, like, just like when Colonel, I was not expecting to hear Colonel Sanders. Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that really threw me off a little bit. <laughs> but uh, what war did he serve in? <laughs> he served in the Great Chicken War, of 1812. <laughs> oh man! So, so something that broom, I get, so broom that over. Yeah, just broom it. Just broom it. Just broom it. Just broom it. So something I got out of that is, um, and so much of this stuff I get from Gary Vee, but it's just it's because I've consumed so much of it that it's just yeah, become a part of me. Great. But one of the best things that he ever said are battle scars are attractive. Oh yeah. And man, he talks about he talks talks about wanting to fail in front of people because I can tell you when I started doing so, stuff on social media you have this um, you have this immediate mindset of everything has to look great like mm -hmm. you have to succeed you have to like you set a goal you got to hit it but it's more attractive to set a goal not hit it, yep. set another goal, hit it, or set another goal, not hit it, set another goal, not hit it, set a goal, hit it. Yep. Like the, the failures, the struggle is part of the story. Which takes you to the next one. If you want to read that one, we yeah. can continue to talk yeah, about yeah. failure because this yeah. is the biggest one. So you right. will so you will fail. You Period. will yeah. fail. Risk taking is at the very heart of any quest for success. You must leap into the void of the unknown and see what happens. When striving for success, you will consistently face choices which involve risk. Risk is, by nature, scary. You may lose your life savings or lose your reputa reputation. You risk criticism and humiliation. You will likely have to pick up the pieces and start all over again, time and again. God. On any path towards success, you give up what you know for what could be. On any path towards success, you give up what you know for what could be. God, you, give what you, know. you give you up give what, what you know. You give up what you know for what could be. Got it. That's a good story with that. On any path towards success, you give up what you know. Just remember. For what C could students be. own the company and B students work for A student. Or what is it? I don't know. No, B students take well, I can't remember what it is. That's how stupid I am. I can't even remember the saying about the smart kids. The rewards can be great, but so can the cost. You will fail and you will have to rise. Each risk gone wrong is really a risk gone well because it leads you in a new direction to take a new risk. Failure helps cultivate the virtue of resiliency, which you will need for your long-term success. Failure's purpose is to fine tune your efforts towards success. Yep, and failure is a part of everything. Failure is the only way. You have to fail your way to success. Every single successful person did it. And but see the 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 fear that you had right when you were started your started the social media stuff because that's a great example, mm -hmm. um, and you started putting yourself out there. The fear that you had was of failure and humiliation in front of people because we are taught from the age of nothing that failure is bad. Mm -hmm. In school, you get an F. Is that good or bad? Bad. It's bad. Failure is bad. I've talked to my kids like my son came. Back and he was so upset that he had gotten, he had failed on some kind of math quiz he had. And he, he's a great student, he usually does really great. But he failed on a math quiz. And he was like, distraught. Yeah. And I was like, if, if that's great. Mm -hmm. He goes, what do you mean that's great? I was like, that's great you failed. Now we know, now we know what you gotta work on. That's mm -hmm. no big deal. Yeah. Like if you're not failing, if you're not failing 80, 90% of the time, you're not doing a damn thing with your life. Mm -hmm. You're not trying anything. You're not going anywhere. If everything you're doing is just clipping along at a good rate and you're not hitting the obstacles and failures, mm -hmm. I promise you, ask yourself, you ain't going nowhere. You literally are probably just going in a circle and on a merry-go-round, right? Mm -hmm. 
you're you're definitely not on a journey somewhere if you're not failing. I mean, a lot of these Facebook live videos that I do, and I set a goal in the beginning of the week, and then keep people updated throughout the week, and then recap. So many times, I, I could sit there and I could say, hey guys, my goal is 50 policies this week, and then go crush 150 and, and feel like the king of the world. Oh, I'm or, the greatest success ever. Or I can set a, a goal of 200 and, and write 150, and it won't feel as good, Yeah. right? And so, I mean, for me, that's... So there's a, a key point here, and I wanted to bring it up because it's a, a conversation we had the other day, or yesterday, um, about being a fraud. And, yeah. and what I want to talk about is in, in relation to failing, and, but more in relation to doubting yourself, that every successful person on this planet has felt like a fraud multiple times throughout their life. And what I mean by fraud is anytime you are doing something that you've never done before mm -hmm. and you're trying to do it with the confidence of being able to accomplish it, that is a fraudulent environment to be in. Yep. You've never done it before, but you have the confidence acting like you've done it a million times yep. and you're going to succeed. That is a fraudulent environment to be in. Sure. So you are being a fraud in that situation. Yep. So you cannot succeed without going through periods of time where you will feel like a fraud. Like so many times when we're trying to do things and we're setting these big goals, audacious goals audacious. Where, where, you're, where you're like, I've never done anything like this, but I'm going to have the confidence and I'm going to set out on a path and work so hard that it's like I've done it a million times. Yep. And you will have these times where you feel like, man, who in the world am I to be? That's exactly to what be, you feel. To be, you know, setting this kind of goal. Who in the world, with the social media stuff, like, who in the world am I to be getting on here and talking to other people about success when I've had failure after failure after failure after failure? And that's, that's that self doubt. And it makes you, and it makes you feel like a fraud. But if you just keep doing things that you've always done, and you're never trying to reach out and go beyond, and you never experience that fraudulent environment, yep. then you'll you'll never grow. Never because grow. you're just staying. If you if you don't want to be a fraud, then you're just staying with Maybe. what you've done. You're and, and yeah, you're just doing the same thing over and over and over and over, and you feel comfortable with that. Yeah. And you um, never change. Yeah, and, you never and change. the view never changes. Right? Mm -hmm. The view never changes on the merry-go-round. So yeah. if you want to know what the next five years is going to be like, just look at the, look at the last five, mm -hmm. right? You know what will change about the next five? Not much. Because if you don't change, not much will change. Anyway, get to failing is what I say about that one. And, and, every, and every failure is one step closer uh, to ultimately your success. And that's why I love when Gary talks about the battle scars are attractive. Because he talks all the time about, he's like, I cannot wait to fail in front of you all. Yeah. I can't wait. Uh, because number one, my skin's about this thick yep. and I could care less what any of you think. Yep. But number two, that failure and me rising up from it and mm -hmm. rising up from the ashes, if you will, and succeeding will make will make the success that much greater having and this is with the social media, having people seen the failures will make the success that much more impactful because it's real. Right. Like no one wants to see the guy that gets up there uh, and shows on Instagram and Facebook just these gigantic like, f you know, success after success after success. They want to see the failures too. They want to know that you're actually a real person. Real human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that failure way to success is one of those sayings, right? And what um, you just said, your your failures will ultimately lead to your success. But but what I want to propose to people is that success is a journey, mm -hmm. right? So. So when you start the journey, your success, you started it, that's successful. Like you already are successful because you started the journey, mm -hmm. right? So when you fail, let's take weight loss, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you start that journey of weight loss, you, you've let yourself go, you're unhealthy, whatever it is, you start that journey of weight loss, you're aware that something needs to change, you are successful. You're successful because you started. When you eat the entire apple pie and a gallon of ice cream and and crush that, but you're aware that you're doing it. How do you know what I have for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> you're most people would say you failed, you're not successful. No 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 no. No no. Keep moving forward. Okay, you failed, but you're still on the success journey. Right? That's a blip and you just keep pushing, forgive yourself, 
right? I, I screwed up or I failed at this or I failed at that. Forgive yourself and keep moving, right? That's the key to when you fail, it's a, it's a failing forward and you get up, dust yourself off and go, damn, I ain't trying that again. Or God, I gotta remember not to do that. And you learn from them, that's success. When you learn from your failure, that's success. So, so next time you wanna eat that whole apple pie and you wanna eat the whole half gallon of ice cream, it's not in the house because you learn from your last failure, right? You learn from it. It's your I mentor. Used to, it's your mentor. Mm -hmm. The failure taught you. Mm -hmm. You didn't beat yourself up. Like we're the only species on this earth that never forgives itself. It mm -hmm. beats itself up over and over and over and over and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Short memory, we talk about that all the time. Short memory, have a yeah, short absolutely. memory, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself, let go and keep moving, failing forward. Because that is success. That's the defi that, That's my definition. So, and success is the journey, not the destination. Period. Yeah. So it's not like you're you're gonna one day get there and you're gonna say, ah, "Damn, I'm successful. We made it. Look at look at us. We look made at it. us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we feel, feel so great. You. I'm glad we didn't touch. <laughs> it was close. Oh, it was so close. <laughs> God. But it, it's, it's. I threw up a little back in my mouth, man. I don't know what that means, but. But success is the <laughs> is the journey. Um, and in along that journey, there are going to be many, many, many failures. Many. Um, but it leads right into this last point, which is it'll all be worth it. Uh, so it worth. says to achieve, is this your turn to read, I think? No way I don't butcher it again. I don't really care. Yeah, you care. Sure. We got to got to take a reading class. <laughs> <laughs> to achieve anything, and now watch what I do. <laughs> to achieve anything, you have to think positive about what you are doing. I can't get that first line. To achieve anything, you have to think positive about what you're doing. You have to know that what you're doing is right. You have to believe that you will succeed and you have to trust the process. Because failing success, failing success, it's all a process. When the right thoughts and actions are combined, there is nothing you cannot achieve. Most people are gonna think that's a lie, but that's correct. When the right thoughts and actions are combined, there's nothing you cannot achieve. With the right idea, attitude, and thoughts, a struggle really is nothing but another essential component of your success. The struggle is a mentor. The struggle is where you learn. Um, God, I love that. It all starts with the other guy. No, not right. It all starts with you. It all starts with you. When you fall in love with a great idea, you can fall in love with a shitty idea, mm -hmm. but if you fall in love with that idea, fate will push you to follow that path, right? You can call it fate, I don't care what you call it. Your vision can impact the world, and, and she said, this is where I wanna change this, she said your vision can impact the world. I'm saying your vision will impact the world, but you have to really want it. The vision is the prize, not the money or the end results. This is what you are really here for, isn't it? To have an impact, to make a difference. You can only know your significance through the impact you have on others. When you see that your success improves and positively influences the lives of others, it will all be worth it. I don't believe destination to be a place. I believe destination is a feeling. <laughs> it is the experience of what it feels like to deeply move, help, and contribute to the world at large. Or you could change that. You could change it to, it is the, if you're a stay-at-home mom, if you're a stay-at-home dad, if, if your world is those children right now, it is the experience of what it feels like to deeply move, help, and contribute to those young ones. You see what I'm saying? You can change it to our friendship. Mm -hmm. It is the ability to, to deeply move, help, and contribute to our friendship. It is the ability to, to to deeply move, help, and contribute in our jobs, in our workplace, and you see what I'm saying? Yep. And and to impact the world. That type of destination makes the struggle of the journey well worth it. So that's this girl got this girl's got it. Yeah. She's got it figured out. I mean, there's a couple of things there I love. I love how they say trust the process. Yeah. And that's and that gets back to the discipline and being able to have a process, but but once the process is set, not letting the failures and successes make any, um, make any, not letting the failures and success um, influence your ultimate 
process. So the process is the process, and you're going to do it when there's going to be ups and downs, but when you trust the process, you know that eventually, to, over yep. time, showing up consistently over a long period of time, that it'll all work out. But it says when the, when the right thoughts and actions are combined, there's nothing you cannot achieve. But the key word there is actions. Like, you can have all the thoughts in the world. Oh, yeah. But when you combine those thoughts with actions, but then it talks about thoughts again because it says with the right idea, attitude, and thoughts, a struggle is really nothing but another essential component of your success. And the thoughts is something that we talk about all the time, uh, whether it be you know in the four agreements or with Unbreakable or with the inner Control dialogue, the inner dialogue. Or impeccable with your word yeah. or any of those things. Is it's mastering your thoughts. Like your thoughts are so integral in this journey of success and in. And notice how I said journey of success, not journey towards success, because the success is the journey. Your thoughts play such a huge role in that, because during those times of, of doubt, during those times where you're losing relationships, where you want to give up prematurely, where you're feeling pain, yeah. it's your thoughts, ultimately, and being able to um, handle that inner dialogue that will ultimately make... Make or break you. Make or break you. It'll decide yeah. whether you end up... Uh, where you want to be or, or not or it'll it'll decide where it'll it'll uh, decide whether you give up or persevere and there's that that quote from uh, pastor Stephen Furtick that I love so much where he said the pain of falling short is nothing compared to the shame of stopping short oh god and so when you think about that it is when you when you fall short it's because you had a goal you went after it and you it. fell short but if you stop short, that is a choice. Yep. That's a choice. And that, the shame in that is far greater than any failure. It's awful. It's, it's, and that's where ultimately, at the, end of, at the end of your life, when you're on your deathbed, you will not look back at the things that you attempted but failed at. You'll look back at the things that you stopped. Didn't do. And that you didn't. quit. Yeah, God, God man. I want we, you to jump, man. Yeah. When as we're wrapping this up, I mm -hmm. want you to jump and to to your what you quoted. Right? Yeah. I want you to jump to that because, and we can end on that. Yeah. Because it is it's absolutely powerful. And you came up with the last line. Which, yeah. Which believe it or not, this Joker comes up with some good stuff. <laughs> Every now and then. Every now and then. But it'll root around find another now and then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while. So. <laughs> So every successful person has a painful story. Every, every successful person one. has a painful story. You have a choice whether your painful story has a successful ending. So every successful person has a painful story, but you have a choice whether your painful story has a successful ending. And so that's the encouragement, that's the challenge coming yeah. out of this episode is there are people watching this, and this may be you today, right this very second. You're in a painful season in your life. And, and I would venture to say, not just every successful person has a painful story. Mm -hmm. Every person, every person mm -hmm. has a painful story. Yep. We don't pretend to know all of your stories. Maybe, I mean, think about it, Tyler. Maybe you, uh, maybe you were molested. Maybe your parents abandoned you. Maybe you have failed marriages. Maybe you have failed friendships. Maybe, maybe you've been to prison. Maybe you, maybe you mistook and <laughs> Jason, don't. that was funny look on his face when I said that. Maybe, maybe, I mean, I don't know what it is. Like all of the hurt, like the painful situations that we can be in in life. I mean, maybe you just got betrayed by the closest people to you. Maybe, maybe people let you down. Maybe you let people down. Maybe you betrayed people. Um, what it, people don't understand is the worse off your situation is right this second, the better your success story will be. Bam. And, That's it. And that, and that right there is the, I can't think of any better encouragement, period. Period. Like I, like I have a friend and he's coming, he's um, struggling from uh, drug addiction and he's coming out of it. And, and he's um, posting on social media, he'll probably see this, and he probably doesn't want me to talk about it, but that's all right, I don't want to use his name, but um, he'll be on social media talking about it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he'll disappear off social media for a little while. And then he'll come back on and say, well, you yeah, got the best of me again. Addiction is, is a real thing. It's real, it's man. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. But, but for that person, that's going through real stuff, like real stuff. Not like it's legit. Not like you know, my feelings got hurt yesterday, and 
you know, uh, I'm not gonna be able to go on this vacation. I'm gonna have to go on this lesser vacation. Like, no, like, 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 I was, like I was, you're getting evicted. I was like, raped. <laughs> yeah, or, like or real bad, bad happened, yeah. man. Bad shit happened. Whether it happened to you or, or whether you did it, regardless, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But the encouragement of knowing that the it's it's almost. I wouldn't say better, but the the more jacked up your story is right now, the more incredible your story That's will right. be later on. But you got to choose that. <laughs> you have to choose to make the decision to move towards there. That's right. And and that is the key. And it's not just your thoughts; it's your actions that will ultimately yeah. lead you there. But being able to to tell your story from from. 10 years down the road yeah. as to here's where I was and here's where I am now. That's where when you talk about making an impact on the world, that's how you do that's it. That's how you do it. So the ones that came up with, with such a, you know, a series of successes and it, it appears as though that their lives were never really all that difficult, never that, never that tough, their success stories don't pale in comparison to the person that was like, look, I was living on the streets for six months, yeah. you know, Nothing, nothing to eat, nowhere to stay. Started selling this, started doing this, and all of a sudden, a here's this story. Here's this students. progression. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's those are the greatest stories. Uh, so that's our encouragement coming out of this. I'll say this last quote, and then we'll wrap up. John F. Kennedy once said, "Nothing worthwhile has ever been accomplished with a guarantee of success." Hmm. So just know going into that, whether you're currently in a season of failure or in a season of success. There'll be both along the way. Both of them. Every, it, it'll go success, failure, success, failure, success, failure. Yeah. But the journey itself is the success, not the destination. That's exactly right, man. So we encourage you. We, we want you to be encouraged. In fact, I think that, you know, we should, we should throw out there to people, if you have one of those just heart-wrenching stories and you've overcome it, I want to hear it. Or if you're in that, that terrible situation right now, right we, now. Want, we want to hear from you because we want to follow your story over the next I want to follow months. it. I yeah. want to follow it. I want to see. You apply this. I want to see you win. Absolutely. Right? Yep. I want to see you fail too. And I want to see you pick yourself up, dust off the BS, and get right back at it. So, so that's it. So guys, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Seek some discomfort. Seek, seek the uncomfortable situation. If you got something out of this podcast, which this was a, I'm not going to lie, this is a good one. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in this one. We would really appreciate you sharing it on Facebook. Um, it would mean the world to us because I promise you. And like our pages. Yeah, right? like our pages, Tyler Harris page and the Joseph Caldwell, right? Yep. Um, like our pages, but share this video so because you, even if. You actually if, need to go like it after this. Have I not? You did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Sorry. I'm t- <laughs> <laughs> no, but but so. Well, that's funny because I've stolen. Most of the shit from you. <laughs> but even if you, so if you got something out of it, share it. But if you didn't get something out of it, share it because someone Somebody. in your newsfeed will see this and it will spark something that you have no idea what could happen twelve months from now because exactly. they heard it. So, so guys, with that, I'm Tyler Harris, Joseph Caldwell, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! That sounds, that sounds weird.